welcoming college football reporter Harry Lyles Jr. to the show. 12 teams now make the CFP. These are the 12 teams with the shortest odds of making the college football playoff. We've got Ohio State as well as Georgia heavily favored, while LSU, Florida State, Michigan, as well as Clemson, all at plus money. So, Harry, which one of these teams is most likely to miss the playoff? I'm going to go with Michigan, and it's not because I think they're the least talented team on this list. It's more because of their schedule. If you take a look at their schedule, they've got Texas, USC, Oregon, and Ohio State. Now, the good news of that is they get three of those four games at home, but this is a team that is currently undergoing a quarterback battle. I, I think ultimately that'll work itself out. They're still going to be stout defensively, and if Donovan Edwards can get back to his 2022 form, having him in that running back slot, especially a year coming off of losing Blake Corum is going to be huge for them. So that's going to be the difference maker there. If they can get two of those four games, then I think you're looking at a 10 win Michigan and then a playoff berth. But I think that's a lot to ask, especially with all the moving pieces that they've got coming into this year. All right. Outside of the chiseled jawline, the beautiful <laughs> thing about Harry Lyles is you can go deep on college football with him, not just surface level questions about teams like Alabama. So let's dive into it. Non power four conference champ highest rated version of that individual is going to the playoff. I like Texas State at 13 to one. Who do you think it could be? I like that pick, but I'm going to go with the Memphis Tigers I actually did a story on them for ESPN.com. This is a team that has been in a four year process. They bet on 17 year old Seth Hennigan to be their starting quarterback four years ago. He is a rare four-year starter in college football but the tough part is for them you take a look at this schedule that road game at Florida State at South Florida that's a tough one at UTSA and they've got that Auburn game as well so if they can take care of business on the road which they really improved that last year you have to love Memphis's odds very talented pieces around Hennigan their defense is going to be improved as well led by Chandler Martin at that linebacker position and if you look at the American five four of the last five years the American champion has played in the New Year's Six Bowl or in the case of 2020 one Cincinnati was in the playoff three of the best options in that category Texas State as I mentioned Harry's Memphis and then Liberty is another team to keep an eye on as well all right let's go back to the big programs and we'll go to the Big Ten for that Dan Landing and the Oregon Ducks second shortest odds to win the Big Ten behind the Ohio State Buckeyes are you a believer in the Oregon Ducks in their first year in the conference I'll take them to win the Big Ten okay Ooh. I know Ohio State's the best team on paper and all these things Look, there is a reason that Alabama and everybody with the money down there in Tuscaloosa wanted to pry this man and bring him to Tuscaloosa. What he has built at Oregon is sustainable. He brought in a quarterback in Dylan Gabriel that is going to keep that train on the tracks, picking up from where they left off with Bo Nix. He's going to have great weapons and transfer wide receiver Evan Stewart. They've also got Tez Johnson. And then even at uh, tight end, they've got Terrence Ferguson, who I think is really set for a breakout year. Defensively, they return nine starters. Bring in Jabbar Muhammad from Washington. This is an Oregon team that is going to be a tough out every single time that you play them. And I think that they're built for success. And they get Ohio State at home. So I think they're going to win the Big Ten this year. And Oregon isn't the only new Big Ten newbie. So why don't you walk us through some win totals for the others. We'll start with USC. Yeah, starting with the Trojans, look, I, I think that they're going to have a good season this year. When we talk about Lincoln Riley, who's talk, taken a lot of uh, criticism during this offseason, he is one thing he has always a, been able to do is get the most out of his quarterback. He's going to do that with Miller Moss. This defense is going to be much improved as well, and that is going to make the difference for this USC program. Moving on to Washington, I am going under here. Six and a half wins. Look, man, there's a lot of new faces up there in Seattle. One you're going to know is Will Rogers. The rest are going to be brand new to just about everybody else. They also have an extremely tough schedule. Washington, we're going under there. And then finally, UCLA new head coach, Deshaun Foster. You've got new offensive coordinator, Eric Bieniemy, that's familiar with a lot of people, but we're still talking about a team that's got a lot to fix, especially after losing Danton Lynn, the defensive coordinator who led one of the best turnarounds last year with their defense. He is now at USC, so we are also going under for the UCLA Bruins as they move into the Big Ten. It's a handsome card right there, if I may say. That is. Now, we've been talking award markets all week, so sticking with that, who's your Heisman pick? I hate to pick the favorite, but man, it's hard for me not to go with Dylan Gabriel. This is a, one of the most well-traveled players in all of college football. I did one of his games in 2021 when he was at UCF. Just an incredibly tough player. He transfers to Oklahoma last year, 
goes in and beats Texas in that Red River rivalry, one of the toughest games that anybody plays at any point of the year on the college football calendar. He's going to have the weapons around him that I mentioned earlier, and Dan Lanning is absolutely going to put him in the best positions to win. And I think when we're talking about things outside of football, when we talk about Oregon moving into the Big Ten and the opportunity that's in front of them, I think that's only going to help bolster his Heisman candidacy as we move forward. It's all right if you want to pick the favorite in a futures market. I do it all the time. No shame in that. Seven to one. Hey. <laughs> you can catch Harry Lyles Jr. on CFB Live and read his work on ESPN.com. Thanks so much for joining us.